Um, anyway, socialmediaworkshop.homestead.com. That's something you can use as a tool for yourself and also to train your team. It goes into a hundred times more than what we're sharing with you today. So definitely use it as a tool when, when you get home. All right, Facebook one-on-one. -on -one. Anyone in the room not have a Facebook account? All right, never. never. Mm. All right, so you definitely want to get a Facebook. So this is for you, this part of training, yes ma'am. Uh, the next part of the training is that sh this is for you if you don't have a page. You definitely want to get a personal Facebook page. It's very simple. Go to Facebook.com, create a page. If you're more seasoned and you have no idea what you're doing, get someone that's younger. Okay? Get one of your grandkids, kids, somebody to set it up for you. Or also Mike back there. Michael is our social media guru in Ameriplan. Give it up for him. So we can definitely help you set it up. Call corporate. Y'all know the number. And Michael. Michael in Swarovski. Michael I. Michael I. Michael I. That's it. Hi, Michael. All right. And so, anyone in the room who has a Facebook page, not have a fan page, raise your hand. You don't have a fan page. Wow. Okay. No, a fan page. If you don't know what it is, it means you don't have it. Okay. <laughs> so, so you definitely want to get yourself and create yourself a fan page. Okay. And it's very simple. You can just search it. Create a fan page, um, but you definitely want to have that. The difference between the two is exactly what it, the, what it's called. A personal page is for your personal uses, uh, which will explain how you can use it for your business uses. And your fan page, it's also called a, a business fan page, is for your business, okay? Okay, next. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Yes. But see, here's, here's the problem. We get excited, we get passionate about it, the outcome, right? right? But we also have to be willing to fall in love with the process. Yeah, that's right. We only fall in love with the outcome, but we don't fall in love with the process. Exactly. So we gotta be willing to follow the fall in love with the process so we can get to the outcome. That's right. So we have to be make sure that you know why you're in this business. What is it that you and, and you cannot just write down I because I want to make more money. That doesn't work. It's gotta have some emotional attachment to it, okay? Because you wanna travel, because you wanna send your kids to college, because you wanna retire. Whatever it is that you want, it's gotta be solid as a rock. I call this the anchor in your American business. Because if not, people are gonna get you distracted. Things are gonna get on the way. And we can always, sometimes we think that we can motivate our own ideas, with our own goals. That doesn't work, okay? You can motivate your IPOs with their own goals, not with yours. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what is important, to find out what their goals are. So if you take the time to find out what their goals are, the reasons why they want to go through the process, when they get discouraged, guess what, they, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go back and remind them why they wanted to build this business. You remind them with their own goals, not with yours. And that's how you're going to be able to keep them moving forward, getting back on track. Because we all have the tendency to get off track. And you can always bring them back on track with their own goals. That's why it's important. I know you do a lot of with your team. Uh, I just basically started to do more onto the global market. I'm more of an online market. Um, believe it or not, I was a little shy when I got started. I didn't even talk face to face with people. I just felt comfortable behind my computer. But um, now I'm starting to get out there, leaving my information. I will always leave flyers. And what I do is, um, for some of you who get, get started and your budget may not be that high, I take three small flyers, print them on. Uh, an eight and a half by eleven, and cut them into some <laughs> envelope size. They can fit in a little um, uh, those display cases if you wanted to, uh, or um, something simple and small in your pocket. You can just put, uh, put them on a counter. I will leave them everywhere I go. The supermarket, dry cleaners. Um, when I take my groceries out of the cart, I put my flyers in the grocery in the, in the wagon so people can take it. Um, I leave it at the cashier. Uh, and also, when I go out to dinner, it's funny, one time George and I were out to dinner and um, he said to me, don't you have to go to the bathroom? 
And I said, no. He says, don't you have to go to the bathroom? Because I just came from the bathroom. I said, oh, I'm glad. He says, no, don't you have to go to the bathroom? He goes, I said, no, not now. Stop bothering me. He goes, go put your flyers in the bathroom. Oh, my God, yes, okay. So that's what we do. You know, you go out to dinner, you, you leave your flyers on the hand dryer and everywhere you go. You know, like I was saying earlier, my, my kids call me uh, Hansel and Gretel. Oh, my mom is here. Here's her flyer. Oh, wow. You know, you let your, no, let your trail be known.